today we are going to paint a super cute lass using Prima Marketing The Classics. This is my field test for these watercolors. So keep on watching to find out how they stand up and how they fare. <laughs> going to do the field test for the watercolor confections classic set I inked this cute little illustration on a piece of Fabriano um, artist watercolor paper and I did that using a waterproof Sailor Mitsuo Ida so the next step is for me to erase the graphite pencil and I'm using a very very gentle eraser this is a creative mark writes white stroke and I will go ahead and erase and then check in with you guys so when I review art supplies, I always try to include a field test portion when I can. And the reason for this is, you know, there are plenty of art supply reviewers here on YouTube who only um, swatch the materials and they might swatch them on like four or five different types of paper, sure. But that doesn't really tell you anything about how the material reacts, whether you can layer it, whether it's going to reactivate. Um, it doesn't really give you an idea of how the materials perform. So even though field tests are very time consuming and not necessarily very popular, I think it's important for me to do them so that I can give the best most well-rounded answer I can. And for me, it takes more than just a simple sketch to find out whether or not something is truly worthwhile, truly art artist grade. I have to work the way I normally would work. So that is why I go to all the trouble of doing so many field tests, both here on the channel and over on the blog. They're really important to me and I feel like it's necessary for me as an art supply reviewer to do field tests in order to be able to give the best answer and when i reviewed the tropical set by prima marketing i did a field test for that as well so the next step is we're just going to go ahead and secure this little illustration <clears throat> i'm going to do that in a couple of ways using a very low tack blue tape we're going to fold it over and place it behind because I really don't want to tape this piece down too much. I want to work to the edges where possible. So we're going to start with this and hopefully that will hold it secure. And we're just affixing it to a little piece of chipboard for now. So the next step is to go ahead and take out our watercolors. As you guys can see here, we have the classic set, and since I didn't tape these down, there was some migration. So I'm just going to go ahead and, <clears throat> sorry, pop them back into order. It's not a big deal. Usually I would tape these down with washi tape. I just didn't with this set. And these watercolors were purchased out of pocket since they were going for a pretty good deal on Amazon. I decided to splurge and get some to review for you guys. So after this, I need to go grab my daisy palette. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to do a background color. Now, she's sort of inspired by, say, Irish folk dancing. So her hair is going to be red and her dress is going to be brown and green. So I want something that will look good with that. And I'm not super hot on those blues. But now would be the time to go ahead and establish that. And I'm going to go ahead and fill a few wells and also activate. I mean, there's that hot pink, which is just so hot. I don't know how I'm going to use this. Honestly, I feel like the tropical set in terms of like a practical usable set has better colors. Maybe I should go with gray and that would really make her hair pop. So I'm gonna give that a second to soak in and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a few brushes and I need to give them a bath. They're starting to look kind of dirty and gross. 
And in general, I like painting with natural hair brushes. So I have a lot of squirrel and I have some Kalinsky sable. All right. Now, what did we end up going with the gray? Because otherwise we really wouldn't be using the gray too much. And it seems like the gray is going to be super opaque. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and mitigate that a little bit because I don't necessarily want a thick chalky background. Also grab some of this blue, it looks like ultramarine blue and that'll give us maybe a little bit richer of a gray instead of just like dove gray. And if the paper starts buckling while I'm doing the background, I'm going to do what I did in another tutorial, maybe another couple tutorials, where I go ahead and I do the background and then I will attach the background or attach the paper a little more securely to my board and that way I'll still get that to the edges painting without all the buckling that sometimes can come from that. I'm also going to, I think, dab in some of this gray while, so we're gonna do some wet into wet and I'm just gonna float some of this gray into the background and maybe that'll give us like a nice sort of mottled cloudy sky effect. And I also want to add in some of that blue, but the blue as it is is a little intense. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it over to my side palette before I start dabbing it in. So these paints, they, they seem to use a lot of optical brighteners, at least the, the classics set, which in my swatching video, I believe I pointed out that most watercolors would not find these to be classic watercolor colors. Alright, then, because I can just never leave well enough, I'm going to put in a little bit of salt and that's going to cause some modeling. All right, so I need to allow that to dry. All right, guys, this dried and while it dried, one of my light sources died. So it will affect, unfortunately, color accuracy and I apologize for that. So it may not be as easy to see, but these react pretty strongly to the salt, which is pretty cool because it makes a nice model effect. So I'm going to go use my drafting brush, stand over a trash can and brush off this salt. So the next step is to go ahead and mix up her skin tone. And these are not quite the colors I'm used to. So if you're working with a primary color palette, you can mix up a skin tone with a little bit of yellow and I have a feeling these colors are going to really go a long way. So a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, oh that's going to be too much, and a little bit of brown. And we're going to need to swatch this because this looks pretty dark. So. Ugh. That's a skin tone, not quite what I was going for. Let's try a little more red. It's a little bit better. And I think I'm just gonna have to remedy this lighting situation. So I will be right back, ideally with better light. All right, so that's a little bit better, at least until I can replace that lamp. And this is what that skin tone looks like. So using a smaller brush than that, so it might be too big, go with this one. We are going to go ahead and apply the first layer of skin tone. 
and keep in mind that watercolor dries lighter than it goes down so this should be a little bit lighter once it's had a chance to dry and already I can tell you guys if you're interested in painting people kind of regardless of skin tone the classic set is not the one you want to go for I think the tropicals is probably a little bit better now they have a set called decadent pies which has some neutrals in it but it also has a bunch of golds and silvers which I mean when you're painting people you kind of need a good variety of colors and you know using gold and silver kind of takes the place of colors that might be more useful all right so I've got that first layer of skin tone down I'm gonna let that dry and I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit better for you guys all right that first layer has had a chance to dry so the next thing I want to do is I want to do some blush but because this color is so saturated I'm gonna have to really water it down and work thinly so that is something else those of you who are interested and these watercolors need to keep in mind is that they are very opaque very saturated so we're gonna do a, the first layer here primary layer i'm gonna work kind of quickly because i need to blend all of that out And then I need to give that a chance to dry. All right, so that first layer of blush has had a chance to dry. We're gonna go in now with a second layer of skin tone. And when you're having to mix red, yellow, and brown to make a skin tone, it can actually make it harder to mix it darker because it's harder to replicate that exact color except, you know, a darker uh, tone. So you really helps to keep swatches and to match your swatches. And we're going to have to do that, I feel like, because this is not going to be much darker. And I do need to build up some contrast. It's how you end up with muddy illustrations is you're not building up enough contrast. And this color really reminds me of when I was um, doing the Crayola watercolor review for my blog it's just kind of like mm, not the greatest skin tone i really prefer doing yellow ochre mixed with uh scarlet red or cadmium red for caucasian skin tones this is just not i mean it dries okay but like it just looks weird to me so i need to let that dry and I think what I might do is I might go ahead and get started with her hair, mixing the color at least. And I want to go, she's going to be a redhead, and redheads have, um, oh, doggone it. I thought that was a, oh, well, you guys can't even see it. I ended up accidentally mixing yellow into my gray. So I will turn my wheel, not that you guys can see any of that. Anyway, redheads, um, they tend to have three layers of highlight. It goes from like a yellow, some of them have brown, um, but like a yellow to an orange to a red. So that's what I am going for here. And that's kind of inspired by my friend Lane's hair, which is like a true, very brilliant red. And then I also need to start thinking about how I'm going to mix the color for her dress because I kind of want to do a plaid. But given how these are, I don't know if I want to commit to that plaid, so I'll start thinking about it. I could also do um, a yellow green. We'll see. You know what? I'll wait until I've done the hair, and then I'll decide from there. And I also want to do a shadow on her eyes, so I'm going to pick up some of that blue. Just a little bit of it, because that is an intense color. I'll just shade the top half of her eye. There we go. And then I'm going to step away and give this a chance to dry. Actually, now that that's dry, I retract that statement. It seems to have 
dried a little darker than I thought it would. So I'm just going to leave that as is. But I'm going to also do another layer of blush. This time a little more concentrated. Blend that out a little bit. And since none of it is touching her hair, I'll go ahead and do that first layer of hair. I want to build up plenty of chromatic depth. And that means layers and contrast. All right. Then I'm going to step away and give that a chance to dry. All right. So next with that is going to be a little bit of orange. Now, usually, um, unless I'm using my big set and painting Kara pages, I mix my own oranges, usually using uh, Scarlet. Ugh. So um, I'm going to actually zoom out so you guys can see that the orange is coming out kind of chunky and weird. Let me see if I can get that there for you guys. And then, of course, I dipped my finger in the black because like you do. So I need to go clean that off my hand before that gets all over everything. All right. On our orange. So moving that out of the way a little bit and zooming in a lot of it. We're going to start. Actually, I see some areas that are still wet and that could make for a really cool blend. You know what? Let's go for it. Why not? So the transition isn't going to be as stark on that side. That's okay. And then I'm using sort of like a little half moon sort of stroke to indicate curls. And I like to try and let the brush do as much work for me as possible. And then we have the braids at the top. So I'm gonna try to leave glints of yellow as highlights. All right, and then we've got this area here where I really want to leave plenty of room for highlights. And I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to decide whether or not I want to go in with a darker orange. We basically obliterated all the highlights on this side by going wet into wet. Her eyebrows. All right. Give that a chance to dry. All right, guys, that's had a chance to dry. I'm going to go in again with my orange, a little more saturated. Make sure we get some nice curl effect. Unfortunately, uh, given our current lighting situation. You can't see that too well, but hopefully you'll be able to see it when I do the other side. And like I say in all of my watercolor tutorials, you want to cover less in each layer. That's how we're going to build up contrast and depth of color. So with each layer we want to cover less than we did the layer before.
And then, go ahead and pull out some. I'm actually going to mix, because this red is a very cool red. Um, so I'm actually going to mix it with that orange to get a little more intense, bright red. But I need to let that dry first. All right, so that layer of orange has had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and go in now with some red. And again, we're just less paint for each layer. Otherwise, what's the point of building in all those highlights? Unless you wanted to use it as an undercolor. Which is why I didn't just apply highlights where I would want highlights I applied it everywhere because I want it to build up and look rich I meant to mix this red orange a little thicker because I've applied the other two colors really thickly and it may not hold up but we'll find out once it's had a chance to dry And I'm going to go ahead and mix that red orange just a bit thicker. So that means I have to put in more orange because we're using the orange to tone down that bluish red. And I think given how high intensity her hair is, I'm going to want to go with the base green, which is a grass green kind of color and uh, darken it up using a blue. Now, unfortunately, let me pull out so you guys can see, my options here are not great. So we've got a green that basically is like bright yellow grass green, a very cool green. Um, we have a sky blue, um, which is kind of even a warm sky blue. And then we have um, sort of an ultramarine blue which is a warm blue. And we would want to, in order to build up a richer green that isn't muddy, we'd want to mix in a, a cool blue, like a phthalo blue, a, a greenish blue. Unfortunately, in this classics set, we don't have that. We have a gray and we have a white and we have a black and we have a hot pink, none of which I would call classics, but no cool blue. We also don't have a warm red, but I know how to fake that with, um, a little bit of magic so I guess I'm gonna have to fake that with this green it's just kind of a shame so these are really not as I'm like mixing and painting um, I'm really discovering that these aren't colors I would call the classics and I really have to think around what my training as a watercolor artist would have me think which is kind of frustrating to do because these are watercolors I shouldn't have to think around especially for a set that calls itself the classics now, if they, if they had referred to these colors as the primaries, because there is actually a CMYK in there, and then you also have um, RGB, you know, I could, I could see that. So, not that I expect any of them are watching or that any of them care what a watercolor artist thinks, but, you know, that is something I would consider changing because um, it just makes a little deceptive and it makes these colors maybe less appealing to someone who might be more familiar with traditional watercolors but that is assuming you even want their money all right so i darkened up her skin a little bit i'm going to let that dry all right so while that dries i'm going to go ahead and apply the first layer to her dress Yeah, that's a very, very bright green. Now, Tropicals comes with a darker green. And if you're like me and you own both sets, you can use them together, of course. Or you could mix and match, or you could, um, since there's plenty of room, in this little set here, you could pick up some other half pans, maybe some Lucas or some Windsor and Newton, and have 
your preferred colors, but we're not really reviewing for that. Right now we're reviewing for this specific set. And go ahead and also fill in. There we go. Let that layer dry. Alright, so as you guys can see, it's basically a lime green when dry. That's that's awesome. So we have a few options, none of which I am super duper excited about. Because if we apply the color too thickly, then if we do a color on a layer on top of it, it's going to end up removing it, sloughing it off. So we have to work sort of thinly and build it up. That's kind of the problem. It's a problem with any type of watercolor. It's a problem with like watercolors that have like a lot of glycerin in them. It's a problem with like artist grade watercolors where if you paint too thickly initially and then you try to do layers on top of it, it'll basically just scrub those layers off and it's gonna kind of ruin your piece. And it's also a problem with really chalky watercolors or watercolors that use sort of an optical brightener to make them appear more vivid which is what i kind of think at least this set of colors from prima are doing so i'm trying to work a little more saturated without necessarily really glopping it on and then i'm going to try and mix the color a lot darker so i'm actually going to pull out so you guys can see how this is gonna go so we've already got a palette with green started. It's gonna add a little bit of ultramarine and it's gonna end up getting kind of muddy, which is a shame, but we don't have a lot of options. Yeah, it's gonna go muddy green instead of the green we want. It might be about as dark as we're going to get doing it that way. And then I also want to mix up a shadow color for her skin. So I'm going to put some water in a palette. And then we're going to grab a little bit of this purple, which is probably dioxine purple. Because it's a very dark purple. And we want it to be warmer than that. So we're going to grab some of this hot pink. Ugh, I really don't like that if we can maybe add a little red it's not that I am afraid to mix colors it's I don't like my options here because it seems to be a lot of optical brighteners in these you know what let's actually let's swatch this color and see what we're gonna get oh, that'll do and then let's swatch that green yeah no nope Okay, let's try working in a smaller, more constant. See if I had a, if I had either a warm green in the set or if I had a cool blue, um, I could handle this a little differently and be feeling a lot better about it. Problem with this set is it is a lot of compromises and given that they have 12 colors to work with I'm not really happy that they're making so many compromises all right so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and work a little bit on her hair Right, I like how fast she's coming along though. That's, I've been painting comic pages, so this is like super speedy compared to that. It's awesome. All right, so we're gonna let this dry. All right, so that has dried. I'm going to work the blue a little more thickly. Originally I'd wanted to do um, like a plaid and I don't, really know how feasible that's going to be. Right now 
I'm just trying to get the shadows on this dark enough. Hopefully that will be okay. And then I'm going to go back into her eyes. give that a chance to dry as well all right so that dried decently I'm going to go ahead now and do the shadow color for her skin using that color I mixed earlier I think it will work but I think I think if you were trying to paint different ethnicities with this set you might have difficulty doing so Because your options for mixing color just aren't great. This seems like a great set for stampers, for hand letterers, like people who really just want like one layer of very vibrant color and they're not going to do any layering and they're not going to do any color effects. But this... This is a hard set to work with if you're doing other types of art. So, um, and I point this out, I make such a deal out of, about, ugh, I make such a deal about this because Prima refers to their paints, their watercolors as like artist grade or professional grade. And uh, I would not, maybe they should say, I don't know. Maybe they should specify what kind of professional they mean because professional grade in the U.S. to illustrators to watercolorists tends to mean something a little nicer, a little easier to mix than this set. And the fact that it doesn't come with your, your usual mixing colors, your cool red, your warm red, your cool yellow, your warm yellow, your cool green, your warm green, your cool blue, your warm blue, a dioxane purple, um, or some other purple that you wouldn't be able to naturally mix. Maybe a yellow ochre, maybe a burnt sienna, maybe a sepia. The fact that it doesn't come with, with that sort of selection, that sort of mixing selection, um, you know, to me, then it's not professional grade, at least not for illustrators. Um, and they do have other sets, like I mentioned, but to refer to it as the classics implies that it's classic mixing colors. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll be back in a bit. All right, guys. So we can make a little more progress. Unfortunately, um, a bit of time has passed, so I need to reactivate some of my paints. I'm going to keep working on her skin tone a little bit. Oh, looks like I activated. Let me zoom in. I know you guys can sort of see. Um, I So I came too close to the sun, even though this has been drying for like an hour, and it reactivated some of the yellow and orange. So that is definitely something if you're going to be using these paints, you want to keep in mind if you work too thickly it can reactivate. All right, while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and mix the brown that I'm going to use for her bodice. I don't really like the stock dark brown. It's not a particularly nice color. So I'm going to try to mix it kind of thick because these thin out really quick and add a little red to it and maybe some black. So we've got that. 
That's a little bit better. That's closer to a Van Dyke brown, which is at least a little bit richer. It looks like they have a sepia in there. And not that there's anything really wrong with sepia. It's just that um, not really the color I was looking for. And I'm also going to go ahead and try to paint in some of the folds. Add some shading. Ended up making kind of a pea green color, which is not really the green I had in mind, but you, know, you work with what you have. Alright, so I'm going to step away and give that a chance to dry and then I'll be right back. Alright, so that has had a chance to dry. I'm going to use that brown I mixed up to paint her bodice. And I sort of want a darker shade for her overskirt here like darker than this green but this green is such a troublesome green and I really don't want to move over into blue so it kind of presents a small problem I'll just go ahead and paint her earrings because I'd wanted a darker green but we're not going to be able to easily get a darker green um but you know what we could do actually we could mix that warm yellow with that warm blue and we might get a passable green so i'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see what i'm doing i don't know why i didn't think about oh yeah that's gonna be because there's a lot of optical brighteners in these that's gonna make I can already tell it's kind of a muddy color awesome. the, what's sad is the tropical set handled a lot better than this so that's our first swatch I need to go not only more saturated but darker That's why whenever I do these sort of reviews, I start complaining about optical brighteners really quick because if you're mixing colors the way we're mixing colors here, it really can affect how they look. And it's um, impressive at how, it's impressive how quickly those colors kind of got muddy. So let's try that again. It's still that like same pea green color. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it much darker. without mixing in something kind of weird like violet, which would greatly desaturate it. Also, these, the um, pans themselves, the paint pans themselves, they are uh, fairly abrasive actually, so you can really shred up an expensive brush on these. Although I guess the rationale is that you're not gonna be using an expensive brush on these. All right, let's do another layer on her bodice all right and then let's switch over to a smaller brush to do the inside of her mouth and I'm gonna do the first layer just plain red And then I want to do something about her freckles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of that brown and also some of the skin tone I mixed up. Use that to lighten it a bit. Although honestly, it would have been better maybe if we'd gone with kind of an orange color. Although fortunately, this is drawing fairly light. So it should be passable. And then if 
if I'm careful, I think I can actually oh, see it's going to be the same green. I should have gone much lighter with the underskirt. Of course, then we'd be dealing with pea green and lime green. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to go ahead and apply my first layer and then I'm going to grab that blue. just sort of float it into the green we've already applied. So what I need to do is I need to get this color significantly darker so there's a visual contrast between the underskirt and the overskirt. Otherwise it's just going to kind of look like what's the point. All right so I'm going to let those layers have a chance to dry. And then I'll come back in and continue working on her skirt. All right, guys. So that has had, <coughs> oh, geez, that's had a chance to dry. Gonna go ahead and roll on up some more ultramarine. And fortunately, it did dry a little darker than I had anticipated, which is good because Otherwise, it would just be like light green on light green, which is not, would not be working for me today. Float in a little bit more of the ultramarine. And it's really easy to disrupt prior layers. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. That's fairly disappointing. We'll work some black into that dark brown we mixed for her bodice. And then we'll give it a chance to dry. Well, we'll give the dress a chance to dry. All right, guys. So I'm going to bring this up close for you guys to see. We have a bit of a problem. I don't know if that's like a chalk bloom or if the paint is having a problem adhering to the paper. But it's obviously a thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and try to paint over it. And that is definitely something good to know if you're interested in these paints for anything more than just one layer on your paper. Try to be gentle when covering it since it clearly cannot take layering. So I was doing a Twitter chat a while back about watercolor and I was talking about the Artist Loft watercolors and how they appear to be super vibrant and someone misunderstood me and they were like super vibrant and that sounds great. Um, the problem isn't, the problem is the appear part. Uh, a lot of these look really nice, really colorful. Um, like this brown here seems really saturated um, and dark until it dries. And then it dries kind of chalky, chalky, kind of faded out. So that's the problem with the appearance of vibrancy. When it's not actually vibrant, when it's not actually drying true to the color. That's why I usually am really careful about cheap watercolors. Of course, I'm not, you know, 100% against them, but it's also why I do the field tests here on this channel, because really the only way 
we would figure out something like that is by applying multiple layers and trying to do color effects and, you know, basically using the watercolor. And you're not going to find this sort of information out from a swatch alone. All right. So I'm going to give that a chance to dry. All right. So that's had a fair amount of time to dry. I am going to go ahead and drop some water on my white pan and give that a chance to activate. And I think I'm going to use red, purple, and that brown to do the stripes on her overskirt. And the reason I'm going with those colors is I feel like they're intense enough to sort of stand up to this since we're not really able to get a whole lot of color um, buildup on this paper. Not on this paper, I'm sorry, with these watercolors. I'm, we're using a good quality, we're using good quality watercolor paper, so it's not the paper. And those of you who watched my tropicals field test might remember that um, I was using that Mossery sketchbook and I was complaining that I couldn't tell if it was the paper or the paints. So I used a watercolor paper that I've used many, many, many times. I know it's a quality watercolor paper. Um, I've had good results with it in the past. So I know the problem is really the paints. In fact, we're gonna switch on over. This is a fluid watercolor pad. This is their Easy Block. So it's a cellulose-based watercolor paper. I use this all the time. I'm super familiar with it. And check out all this sedimentation and look at how chalky that dried. <clears throat> so these are really, really chalky watercolor paints. So I'm going to start painting that plaid. I would almost say tartan, but this is Ireland, not Scotland. Let's start with the red. And unfortunately, it's just going down kind of chunky. Then we'll use the cyan blue going down really chunky. And that's kind of um, sort of the, the problem with these field tests is I really liked the, the initial illustration I did for this. And I knew um, that these paints, there's a chance that these paints would just not perform very well and that I might ruin a piece that I liked. And it's unfortunate, but you know, that happens. So I'm going to let that dry before I do the next two layers. All right, guys, so that layer has dried. I'm going to go on ahead now with the purple. And I am applying this very thickly like gouache layers of thick. Although this is not a gouache and I would not recommend you paint with it as though it were a gouache. Seems like a good invitation for disappointment. Usually when I'm testing these sort of water cars, watercolors I will skip the white entirely because it tends to be pretty terrible. This seems to be going on fairly thick like a gouache so it might actually be useful for making corrections. But you know the only way to really tell is to wait until it's dry. Alright, so we are almost finished. This needs to 
fully dry. And then I will check in with you guys and we'll talk about these paints. Alright guys, we're just about done. I apologize for the lighting. My backup light also died, so maybe I can get my computer monitor to cast a little additional light. But anyway, we have finished painting with the Prima Watercolor Confections, the classics. And this is our field test here, this adorable gal. And I found these watercolors to be chalky. I found that they were hard and frustrating to layer. I found that they would pick back up once you tried to paint on top of them. I found that they tend to use optical brighteners and that way you can get some nice intense colors but they don't layer very well. And in general, I really wouldn't necessarily recommend them to someone who's interested in doing actual watercolor painting that involves layering, that involves blending, that involves multiple layers, that involves washes, any sort of legitimate watercolor techniques. Um, these watercolors are not really designed for. Now, if you're doing something with limited layers, say um, a hand lettered piece with like a brush script that might only uh, need one or two layers at most. These are probably great. And if you're using these to color in spot areas, say on a stamped image or in your art journal, they might be great. But they are not what I would consider artist grade professional watercolors and um, I would not necessarily recommend them. Now, I did enjoy using the Tropical set, which is about the same price. Let me see if I have it handy. I do. I found the colors in this set to be a little easier to work with and a little closer to what one might think of when they think of um, classic watercolor colors. So you get your your two yellows, you get two different greens, you actually you get three different greens, you get two blues, etc. This is just a much easier to work with set. You could mix your own black if you need a black. Um, what I would perhaps consider doing is grabbing the red, grabbing this yellow, and maybe grabbing this hot pink because it's not, oh no, this purple. Although that purple and the purple in tropicals are actually pretty similar, so maybe not. But um, I would, if I were trying to put these together into one set, say you've got both and you want one to travel with, I would start with the tropicals and grab a couple colors from the classics. But that's only if you have both. I mean, if you really want one of the Prima sets, I say go for the tropicals and augment it with some Lucas colors or some Winsor & Newton colors. Um, this is, the Tropicals is the better set in my opinion as a watercolorist and a watercolor comic artist. So I have painted a lot of watercolors. I would like to think that my, my uh, experience has some validity. And hey, if you are looking for more watercolor reviews, if you're looking for more watercolor content, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and you can take my free free watercolor course in my watercolor basics section. It is fantastic and it is designed to get you painting. So why pay for those courses where you don't know what you're getting when you can take a course for free and you can check it out right now. So head on over again to natosuit.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. There are reviews, there are tutorials. I walk you through everything step by step. I answer questions. Um, and I'm always eager to hear from you guys. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today during the classics field test. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something, even if you just learned that you don't want to buy the classics or that the classics are not so classic. And if you enjoyed this video, why don't you consider subscribing, hanging around. I do loads of watercolor and Copic marker tutorials. I do loads of art supply reviews every single week, twice a week. In fact, we're looking at bumping up to three times a week on the regular, which is pretty impressive. So there is a lot of reason for you to hang around. And if you want to help make more of this possible, head on over to patreon.com slash natosoup and find out how you can join the art nerd community. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Like I said, I had a blast painting this, even though I did gripe a fair bit. She actually turned out really cute and I will probably have her available for purchase. So I hope to see you guys again really soon. 
Bye, guys.